All right. Thank you so much for getting up early in the morning and joining us. You see, I got a room full here. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. Let me turn you up. All right. We appreciate you getting up early in the morning out there. We know it's 645 in the morning in California. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, we, uh, since we're starting a little bit early, we haven't really got a chance to talk about the uh, health science field at all. But that is our next career cluster we're going through. And I know you, uh, I did tell them you are a critical care nurse in North Hollywood, California, even though you are from here. Mm -hmm. So before we get into what you do at your job, can you tell us uh, about your path you, you did to get where you are now? Okay, so um, I'm originally from Terry. I graduated from Terry High School and I went to nursing school at Bell Haven in Jackson. So, um, and, I, and I completed the Bell Haven program, but there's uh, all kinds of nursing programs. And from there, um, at, and during that time, I took a, a job interning at a hospital, which helped me along my career. And after graduating nursing school, I moved to Baton Rouge and I worked at Baton Rouge and ICU. So that was the, um, the path that I took career-wise and education-wise. So how did you wind up in California from Baton Rouge? So I started a travel nursing during this pandemic. There was, it, it, there was a lot of need nationwide and actually not just the field of nursing, but um, in all kinds of field health-wise, wherever I could, I could uh, lend a hand. And so the opportunity presented itself. I, I came in contact with another travel nurse and she just told me that uh, a lot of people need your help. So I decided to get on a plane and and I flew all the way out here. I've been out here since January. That's awesome. Yeah, my cousin actually did something similar in New York City and she lives in Tallahassee, but she went to, uh, to New York and made a lot of money doing it. Um, mm -hmm. Before we get into what all goes on at the hospital, a few things that I think, uh, and a lot of people are going to see this later too. So we're recording this for all of Madison County schools. But uh, one, there are it, there are a lot of males in the nursing field. I think that is a very common misconception. That is a female dominated field. So if, correct me if I'm wrong. There are a lot of males in the nursing field. There is more males working now, <laughs> right now, than there are females. I would say actually here it's a fifty fifty. Um, uh, it, it, it's fifty fifty. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and actually, in my nursing class, we had we had about 50, 50 meals as well. Okay. Yeah, that's great because it, it is probably right now I would say one of the top two or three in demand jobs in America. Um, mm -hmm. And before and a couple other things is another thing is that uh, we have a lot of uh, students here that wanted to get into nursing, and that's great. But I think mm -hmm. one thing they need to realize is one, you do not need to do it for the money. Because even though it is good money, it is extremely hard work and you see a lot of gross stuff. And two, is that nursing school is extremely difficult. No matter how good a student you are in high school, because I know you, you were an honor student all through high school, but I, you know, you told me yourself, nursing school stuff. And then also, you know, as, uh, with me having family in the medical field, I could never handle the blood and the guts and stuff. So that is something <laughs> you have to be prepared for once yeah. you, uh, you get ready for. So uh, how serious is, is all that? So if you're planning on nursing school, the biggest thing is that you have to apply yourself and to know that, you know, a, a paycheck is okay, but you're dealing with someone's life, uh, no matter if you're in emergency room, NICU, um, critical care, or if you're working a med surge floor, um, the OR, wherever you're working, it is someone's life. Um, so whenever you're in school, you're learning to apply you know, to the whole body. So you really have to apply yourself. I really, um, I got a taste of reality because when I first started, I didn't think that it was going to be so hard and, and um, you know, going out with my friends and everything, but you really have to study because uh, you deal with the whole person that's holistic. So you have to really, whatever you do, you have to really think about what you're doing. So it's more than just giving a pill. It's more than just giving a shot. You have to really think about the whole person holistically. Yeah, and now one thing we usually do in a non-COVID year is we usually go to the St. Dominic uh, Health Science Career Fair, which goes mm -hmm. through all the jobs at our hospital. And there's a lot that are health-related, there's some that are not health-related. So what are some of the other jobs that you deal with in uh, in your department besides nurses? 
That's actually a really good question because patient care is actually, it's more than nursing, it's more than the doctors. You have pharmacy, we have uh, pharmacy techs, physical therapy. A lot of people love, I'm glad I bought up physical therapy because a lot of people say they want to go to physical therapy school and they want to do sports physical therapy. Everybody want to be on the sidelines. Give me one second. Yes. I don't understand what she said to me a while ago. She was asking for food for breakfast. Yeah. Okay. So I don't understand what she wants. Okay. <laughs> How are you? Okay. So again, so we have respiratory therapists, we have um, pharmacy, like I said, and I, I did say physical therapy. So with physical therapy, everybody wants to be at the sidelines at the NFL, but you know what? Our patients need physical therapy too. Um, yeah, and respiratory therapy is breathing treatment. Um, our patients need dietitians. A, a lot of people don't even think about dietitians. Nutrition is half the reason why we're here. Um, to help people. So like I said, that's why it goes back to it's holistic. It's not just the nurses, but um, people who are into health and nutrition, everybody goes back to the sports and I want to be a um, fitness trainer. Well, we need it here just as much as well. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, now, as far as the Bellhaven nursing program, um, what, what was your main takeaway and why should, uh, because even though we have students here that go to all the schools, we don't have a whole lot that go to Bellhaven. So what is the, uh, to, to you, what are the, the biggest takeaways from going to Bellhaven? I like Bellhaven because it's a small personal school now, and it just depends on the person's personality. Some people like bigger schools, like USM has a nursing oh, program yeah. as well. But uh, for my personality, my teachers were always there, always available because there were 20 of us in our class versus a class of 200. So our teachers really knew our names, which was really important to me because especially for nursing, when you get into the meds and, hey, I really uh, don't mind. I was able to take some of my teachers, you know, um, while I'm studying before the exam. Um, so that was really, I like the personal that um, that I got the personal experience at Bellhaven. And a lot of people don't know about Bellhaven, but their nursing program is fairly new. Um, but I also enjoyed the closeness because I became close to a lot of my classmates. And actually three of my classmates are out here now traveling. I have one traveling in Texas. So you just become really close with those people. Yeah, so anybody who sees this later, you know, I know we have a small school here, but we have a lot of our students that are gonna see this later go to really big school. And one thing in high school, you can get lost in the shuffle even at a high school, but at Bellhaven, it is that small class that is very, very useful for a lot of students. Um, and, I, and I know you're pressed for time, but we do have a few questions I want to get to. And these are all ninth graders. Okay. These are some awesome questions. Um, this okay. is, uh, let's see, what's, I just had one. Okay, this is Deja Weaver. She said, what's the scariest thing you've experienced as a nurse? It's going to go back to COVID. Um, during COVID, patients went bad really quickly you know they came into the ER and you know just shortness of breath and feeling bad and then next thing you know you know we have what's called codes and sometimes on tv people watch Grey's Anatomy <laughs> and and it's kind of funny because it's so dramatized yeah. however COVID became dramatized it really did it became okay. what we were watching so those were the scary moments um, now, this is a really good one, and this really doesn't have to do with nursing, but this shows that the job that you have is so transferable because you can nurse anywhere. And this is Patricia mm -hmm. Evans, and she asked, what is the biggest fear you had about moving away from Mississippi? That is a good question. I had multiple fears. Um, being honest, it was about oh, how was I going to make it? You know, nobody really teaches you adults adulting as we say <laughs> hashtag adulting and the, the biggest thing was how am I going to make it on my own without my family you know us being from Mississippi um, most Mississippians are family oriented so that's one of the things I was really worried about and if I was going to be able to provide for myself but I'm going to tell you um, I believe that everyone once I got out there I don't even know what I was worried about I, I secured a job you know I got an apartment those things I was I was worried about all of those things how am I going to feed myself what am I going to do with myself all of those things 
I should never been worried about that. But that's a good question. That's actually something that you should be worried about. And those things take planning. But, you know, that's what I was worried about. But for if, if, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, for some of these kids that want to get out of Mississippi, the medical field could be a great way to get out of Mississippi because you can do it anywhere. You could do it anywhere. All of the, the positions I named, even physician's assistants, you don't have to be a nurse's assistant. You don't have to be a nurse. Some people um, go, I have a good friend who became a physician's assistant. And you know what the good thing about that is um, you go straight to school for it and you can write prescriptions. You can give nurses orders. You could, it's more than nursing. I know a lot of people kind of push nurses, but you can do that. Uh, people don't think about physician's assistants. You're right there with them. Um, and it is very transferable. I have people calling me, oh, you want to go to Oregon? You know, I always have a job back at Baton Rouge. And look, Baton Rouge was a two-hour drive. You know, with some 55, and I can come home and I'm home in Terry. So it's a lot of options. Even uh, if you want to test the waters and, and go to Starkville or in, wherever you want to go, you know, take a two-hour drive and, and figure it out even Hattiesburg, you know, that's, it's safe. It's not too far, but the healthcare field, um, more than ever right now, people are needed in, in every position. Oh, absolutely. Um, now, and one thing, uh, also about nursing is you can change specialties, but this is from Taiwan Job. And he asked, why did you choose the specialty you're in? I like a challenge critical care, um, between emergency room and critical care, they're kind of transferable. Um, it's, it's challenging meaning it's challenging to the mind. You know, you have more complex um, cases. So in critical care, I see the patients you hear on the breathing tube. Um, a lot of times when you see it dramatized or these patients are receiving CPR, sometimes it becomes um, that dramatic. And also it's rewarding because you have the patients that you didn't think that will make it. And that's the most rewarding part about my job is when they come back and they're walking and they're talking and they were just on a breathing tube. So it, I do this because it's rewarding and you become close to the families because some of these patients are here um, for a lengthy amount of time. And in a year from now, those patients, family members still remember what you've done for them. So I do, I do critical care for that reason. That's awesome. Uh, and then we, uh, this is Jaquila Crowley and she asked, what are your aspirations of life? I always say her name wrong. <laughs> my aspiration um so I do want to go further than this um a lot of people don't know that other than this you know you you do have hobbies <laughs> after uh besides what you do like nursing so I love skin um I love skin care so after this hopefully I want to either become a NP a nurse practitioner or go all the way back to med school um, and nursing has given me that foundation. So I want to become a dermatologist, actually. So those are my aspirations. I want to continue helping people. And that goes back to um, medical field being transferable because there's always stepping stones. You can always, I've seen um, dietitians become doctors. I've seen uh, dietitians become physical therapists and nurses become NPs. So there's always, and I was um, a nurse assistant. I was a CNA before this. Oh yeah, um, and, and and luckily here in Madison County Schools, we have a great health science uh, botec program that they can do in either tenth or eleventh or eleventh and twelfth grade. So that gives them the opportunity in high school to see if they would really be involved in it, uh, if they would enjoy it before they ever spend any money or any time on it. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you got to go, and we appreciate you taking a few minutes for us early in the morning. Um, but the one thing I always ask is, you know, you grew up in Mississippi just like everybody here. You grew up black in Mississippi like everybody here. So what have you done? Even if they didn't want to be in the in the in the health field, what can they do to uh, be as successful as you become? I would say keep pushing yourself. Whatever you want to do, um, now more than ever, it's no, it's no um, secret. We're in this everything so political now. I think I say put your race aside. Whatever you have up here, whatever is in your mind, no one can take that away from you. Um, even the critical care field, they say it's hard to get into. Nothing is hard to get into, whether it's health, whether it's cosmetology, design, or whatever you want to do. It's not hard. You put your mind to it and you can go far. You know, even people look at Mississippi and those, we're, you know, we're country. People love me out here. It, it's just when you put your mind to it, step out 
and um, apply yourself. Stick to it. You can, I know that sounds so cliche right now, but seriously, because I had to, there was nights that I thought that I was going to fill a test, you know, and I had to just stick to it. And I'm, I'm working in Hollywood, you know, so, and I, I was going to tell you that I know I was pressed for time, but I'm going to give you um, something that they can continue asking questions like an outlet, because I feel like this is the time that, you know, kids don't need to give up. We need people in the field after you graduate, you know? Yeah. And yeah, if the, uh, and I can, I can share that because like I said, uh, four high schools are going to see this later. So they'll okay. be, uh, they'll be able to see this recording and they'll be able to ask questions as well. Okay. That's good. I, I, I definitely want to, um, inspire other kids you know um they're not kids <laughs> these are not kids however um just to keep applying yourself because there's so much temptation it's just so much out there around everyone um you know just sometimes i and i would say take a break from social media i i want to give that um little tidbit take a break from social media find a hobby apply yourself to something else and, and keep it going I, I play my piano sometimes and just find something um to keep yourself busy but in a good way yeah i mean you are quite the talented musician though we didn't even, we didn't even get into that so um, oh, no 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 <laughs> and but yeah but thank you so much for joining us early in the morning this is that's some really good stuff and I, i'm so proud of you i'm so, so good to see you thank you all right i'll talk to you soon my friend all right all right have all a right. great day Bye. You too.